Welcome to another Lumion tutorial. This is Chris Welton from C. Welton Design. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the fine detail nature trees and other plants that have released in Lumion 10. Let's explore what makes them so special, what makes them add so much more value to our render scenes, and how we can utilize them best in our workflow without going over the limit. And just kind of let's get to know all of them. We'll get to give some in-depth looks at each one that we've gotten. And I look forward to showcasing a lot of this new features for you guys. And I hope you guys can see the value of what these new fine detail nature and incredibly detailed trees add in Lumion 10. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at this. One of the most beautiful and memorable new additions to Lumion 10 is the new Fine Detail Nature category. Lumion has introduced 62 new, detail-rich, beautiful, high-quality models for our scenes. They add a lot more realism and in life to our scene because of the realism of the way they move, the way they render, and the quality level they offer. Lumion was already well known for all of the objects and content in its nature categories. Lumion's trees have always been, has made it stand out. But this time in 10, they've decided to give us something even more special. The new fine detail nature, trees, shrubs, and plants will make your scene incredibly more beautiful if utilized correctly. In this tutorial, I hope to cover a couple things. First, I'm gonna take an in-depth look at what is offered in these 62 new objects. Just take a look at all of them, help you understand what, what we get in Lumion 10, at least right now. Um, I also wanna explain what makes the fine detail nature stand apart from the regular nature category. And also I want to talk about when would be the best practice use case to utilize these in our scenes and what not to do with them. So first off, let's take a look at where we find the fine detail, fine detail nature category. As you can see right here, we have it separate from nature. There's a couple reasons for this. So if we go into nature, we cannot grab any of these trees in this scene. I have them all set up here. And if you go up into here, you can see fine detail nature is a separate category being counted from nature. So let's take a look at the library here. So we've got a place. Okay, so before we had several categories of deciduous versus coniferous trees and cacti and, and shrubs and plants. Right now, we're just starting with trees and plants. So for trees, we start with a, a couple coniferous trees here. I have some of them set up right here. Take a look at. The, uh, the, sh the footage of the fine detail nature comes from this exact scene. So I take a look at each group and you can get a good idea of how they render and a closer look at them. And I've tried to kind of keep it similarly in order how things are set up here and group them together. But here are a bunch of these con coniferous trees here. They have some more detailed, um, you know, pine needles and whatever, <laughs> however you call those the the kind of leaves that they have and when you go to render it I know a lot of them actually soften up too so just a couple little notes about that we got uh, quite a few deciduous trees I have laying around here some are very big come some range from really small ones we also have some some shrubbery some topiary ones like trimmed and sculpted ones to, to work with. It's a good detail. I think we have a hydrangea with flowers. So that kind of would go in like the shrub category here. 
And then we have quite a few of these that are similar, this you know, similar uh, species, like these sweet chestnuts and just different variations. We have some uh, eucalyptus or gum trees and some beech trees and black locusts. Another type of eucalyptus here as well. So we're starting off pretty simple, but it's definitely enough to be of a lot of use. And there's also a couple of these tropical plants as well, as I have set up here. Now, when it comes to uh, when it comes to some of these the plant section as well, like I mentioned, there's some of these topiary ones, some small like bushes kind of have set up here and several small little shrubs and cacti as well uh, this deer grass is actually one of my favorite new additions it renders really soft and nice it's a great little filler to stick in certain areas and I, I've been noticing a lot more grasses called by landscape architects where I'm at so it's always nice to have this kind of option and some smaller little shrubs and a couple cacti which look great, really high detailed. Look at that. So that's just kind of a quick overview. Of that. And these these maples, or these whatever these ornamental trees are, what do they call them, um, Japanese maple. These are beautiful. They're incredible, especially when you start to see them rendered. So now let's just take a let's take a moment and see if I can explain a couple things that are included with these fine detail nature that are not included in the regular or not are not features that the regular nature trees and plants have. Okay, so I have a couple scenes set up here that I hope will showcase some of these differences. The first thing I want to talk about is wind. This is actually something I didn't notice for a little bit until I actually used the wind effect and saw what it did with these fine detail nature trees. So what I have here is a clip of regular trees, regular nature trees here, and it'll transition to some fine detail nature trees. And this one, I'm trying to emphasize how it reacts to the wind. See the regular one, you can tell that these are single pieces, you know, of transparent PNG textures that move kind of all together. You know, from a distance, it, it looked pretty good, but definitely if you're gonna get up close in here, we just kind of have parts of the trees kind of shaking. So not, not super realistic, but when we come to the fine detail in the, uh, fine detail nature <laughs> trees you're gonna see that these leaves all shake independently each branch it's really impressive it's something you really have to see when it's rendered and so if, if you take a look at some of the wind I set up in the uh, in the pre-rendered footage you saw in the beginning take a look and notice that difference in realism in the trees it's definitely something I really appreciate and it it really brings some more realistic life to your scenes if utilized correctly. The next thing is subsurface scattering. So subsurface scattering is when light slightly penetrates a surface and kind of gives it an inner glow. It's something really common with skin. It once one subsurface scattering was was introduced um, peep rendering of faces and people started to look a lot less plasticky a little more life like there's blood underneath if you've ever stuck a flashlight behind your finger and it glows pink around the edges that's subsurface scattering you look at a gummy bear you look at a strawberry so another thing that if that affects is leaves if you take a look at a leaf put it behind the sun you'll notice that the edges are the edges light up it, it's slightly translucent Lumion introduced this in the waxiness slider a couple versions ago and 
they have implemented this now in the fine detail nature. It's kind of tricky to see. It's a little detail that probably only I noticed at first because this is something I suggested years ago once they, once they introduced that because I took a look at some other render engines and how they were making their trees look and I saw that in the leaves and it said that looks incredible. Lumion doesn't have that. So we, if you take a look here, even with the high quality preview here, we have the sun kind of right behind here, but we're really not seeing, there, there's no subsurface scattering going on in here. They're just lit up. This may not be the perfect example here, but when we go to preview some skylight things, you start to see that some of these leaves are lit up a little bit more than the others, having to do with the sun hitting them and getting some of that subsurface scattering. Let's, um, Let's see if I can just really quick on the fly, really zoom in, and try to illustrate. Oh, that leaves not connected. <laughs> but let's see. Just the way that some of these are being lit up and some are being dark, darkened when the light hits them. Some of the trees, I think the the uh, maple trees do it best, actually. It's tricky to, to notice, but take a look at the footage, especially when I'm in the uh, one of the last shots inside of these maple leaves. The leaves of the maples really start to to light up there. You're seeing it right there. I really should have just took a look at this. So these are all dark because the sun's not penetrating them, but the ones on the edge here, the sun is hitting. So minor little thing. I went crazy for it when I saw it. I guarantee you'll start to see it when you start to render some of your scenes and it'll just it's just something that should be there that Lumia has added. Another thing is you know those are some examples of the trunks and kind of the textures on there. Some aren't too bad. Some are okay but really they're kind of flat with normal maps and textures on them. Something that makes the fine detail nature stand out is these have displacement mapping on them and some higher resolution textures. I mean, look at that, it scratches on the bark. You can see that this piece of bark is really sticking up forward. If you take a look at this one right here, you're seeing all sorts of texture and detail in there. And when you preview skylight, it really stands out and sings and just some better, better quality textures overall in the main part of the tree. And those trees are growing together. <laughs> So, another thing that makes them stand out is fine detail nature trees are very heavy. They, uh, Lumion really does not want you to utilize too many of them like you would trees. In fact, it says right here, they will make your scene heavier and can slow down Lumion. They will. We recommend using them minimally. So don't populate an entire forest in the background with fine detail nature trees. I just have one of each in here and I end up having a 60 something and it definitely takes a toll. Um, got a pretty powerful machine and it's a moderately simple scene right now, but I guarantee you start adding a bunch. I've, I tested it out. It, it, it hurts. It's going to hurt your render times. So be cautious on how you use them, mix them up with the nature category. And so that brings us to the last section here, which is when should we use these trees and how should we use these trees? Something I was taught a while ago, and here's a little diagram that I found online really quick. When composing your shot, understanding foreground and background is super important in setting up how you have everything laid out in your scene. So now that we understand that these trees are very heavy and Lumion does not want us to use them too much, when should we use them? One is a good use case scenario of utilizing these trees. So something that I was taught, I'm going to show a little graphic here that I quickly 
found online. When you're composing your shot, you have your foreground, which is right next to the camera, your background, everything in the distance, and your middle ground where typically your subject is going to lie. In case this case, our buildings or whatever we're focusing on here. So in the shot here that I have set up, I have a tree in the foreground right there framing the shot so very close to the camera we're going to get a lot of detail there's a lot of pixels being rendered onto this piece of tree these trees right here kind of blocking the building kind of foreground as well they're pretty much right there in front of the camera whereas when we get to the the building here the cac the cactus here some of these trees right here maybe these right here would kind of lie in the middle ground whereas these ones further back or if I had a ton of more ten more vegetations back there that would be the background or mountains or this this background PNG we have set up in this scene so this calls for different levels of detail the trees that Lumion had before work excellent in the middle ground and background they've never looked really well right in front of the camera that one that's actually a non fine detail tree. I'm gonna turn that off. But it, it worked, it wasn't too bad. But those things that we're gonna have right next to the camera, those things can now be these really high quality fine detail nature trees or plants. They're good enough that they can sit right next right next to the camera almost and still look really good. So that is a great use case for utilizing them. And I would also say that you can utilize them in the middle ground depending on the shot. Again, try to keep them used sparingly, but the place that they should never be used, of course, is the background. The background is too far away. Use the natures for that. Use the regular nature trees and try to use a lot of regular nature trees as well near your subject, except for maybe a real special area, a real special tree just you want to focus. And when you're right here, you know, framing your shot, we'll try one right here I have set up actually. We feel free to use them right here. This would be a good use case of them. Our subject is right here in the center. But we, we're trying to emphasize that this is a landscape, it's a beautiful natural area, and we're, us, we're utilizing the best quality plants that we have set up. Nothing in the nature category would look that good right, right in front of it. And I'm not saying if you got a powerful machine, you know, don't use more than five. Do what you want, but just, just a warning, these are things that will slow everything else down. There's definitely some, some cases where you can have some duplicates. It might run a little better than a wide variety. But just keep keep an eye out, eye out right here. And I, I wouldn't recommend really utilizing much more than 10 or maybe 20. And that, that might be pushing it. Everyone's machine's a little bit different. But just, that was just a little bit of advice I wanted to share. Is they make great great plants to be right next to the camera whereas the other the quality of the nature uh, library before wasn't quite there I would say it's kind of like cars like Lumion's cars the, before we got some more high quality Evermotion cars uh, I would not put those cars right in front of the camera I'm talking about you know these guys not bad. I mean, they're not bad, but I definitely would lose some realism having that thing right next to the camera. In fact, I would even say the higher quality ones that we've gotten from Evermotion and whatever this the squirrel logo is, these are these are good. I would still, for ultra realism, I actually would still not even have them super close to the camera. They make great middle ground, and these guys make great background to middle ground. Especially if they're moving, they do great moving. So we're really trying to go for realism. 
Some of the Lumion cars would really give it away before. We've gotten some better cars now. But still, if I have a car that's going to be framing the shot right in front, I'm going to probably load a custom car that has full detailing in it. That's kind of how I've worked, and it's a similar thing with the trees. The trees that we had before, I mean, there's a couple older ones that maybe aren't super great, kind of like this car. They've really actually phased a lot of those ones out. Most of them would be like the quality of this car here. Use them middle ground, maybe kind of closer, depending. And now, instead of having to custom import some trees from, you know, you name it, different softwares, you can download really heavy, high-quality trees. We have a library full of 62 of them right now that I feel pretty confident you could put in front. These shrubs are really good, too, for framing a shot. Just having them right in the corner can look really great. So if we're looking, say we want to focus on that architectural element having having these guys right here look really good better than anything we had before so that about covers it uh i hope that i hope that my advice has helped can help some of you guys setting up your scene how to best maximize your usage of these without them being a hindrance it's like skylight skylight was amazing but if you set it up too high it just made your render times extremely you know, pretty ridiculous if you're not careful. Or reflection planes. Everything should be used in moderation and it'll work out just great. Really glad Lumion added these. I'm excited to see what they add in the future. Um, one last little thing I wanted to add in here too. I want to talk about what you can edit on them as well. I talked about the differences, but I forgot to talk about their similarities. They do have a hue. They have this similar transparency slider hue and saturation range that we had before did not want to leave that out i think that about covers it all though um you cannot mass place them you cannot even copy them this may be a frustration for you but this is lumion really trying to protect you from over utilizing them because the last thing lumion wants is to give you something that makes your experience more frustrating and slow so glad i got that little point in there too now you know everything <laughs> thanks for watching until next time guys